I hope the screen is visible. Yes, yes, fun. Thank you very much, Madam. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, the uh, Madam uh, Dr. Padma Gunaratna and the SLMA Council for organizing this as well as inviting me uh, to represent the Postgraduate Institute of Medicine. Um, in briefly describing the career pathways and what is ex you know what is available for you when you decide on selecting a postgraduate uh, uh, career. Um, uh, I am Dr. Pandula Siribad, and I'm a senior lecturer in medical education at the PGIM. Um, so I hope that I can uh, um, uh, brief you on some of the things that uh, that will be valuable for you. I chose to start with this uh, quote. Um, uh, simply because choosing a career is, uh, uh, to an extent, a philosophical decision it should be based on a philosophic, good philosophical grounding. Because what will happen otherwise is that halfway through you might end up uh, being so unsatisfied or, or, or thinking that this is probably not the right track that you should be in. So um, this might tell you what uh, actually we should be looking for in deciding on our careers. Um, so let me now go into the current uh, postgraduate landscape at the PGIM. We conduct so many courses uh, throughout the year. And as you can see, uh, the numbers have been growing uh, ever since that it was started. And uh, uh, at the moment we have different types of programs um, numbering to around 120 plus. Um, uh, this includes certificate courses, uh, diplomas, MDs and specialty training and all those. And the new uh, courses are also emerging. So by the time you are eligible to uh, sit for a postgraduate, there may be more opportunities available. So you have to keep this now, also, as you can see, the number of doctors graduating also uh, has been rising, and probably this is parallel to the rising number of opportunities. Uh, but it's also to do with more and more doctors getting into a postgraduate program. So, um, uh, so most likely, many of you will also choose to go into a postgraduate training program to, to extend or further your careers. Now, of course, there are certain specialties which attracts more uh, uh, trainees, not necessarily because of their, uh, uh, their, their popularity, but because there are more opportunities in those areas. And these numbers have been uh, changing also. So um, it will be up to you uh, to decide what fits you, uh, fits you best, as well as where the most opportunities are available and with the, where you, your, your interests are. Now, there are certain factors that determine um, uh, the intake at GIM. And as you would imagine, uh, Ministry of Health is our main client, if I may so, say so. Uh, the reason being that a lot of the doctors coming to our, the PGIM programs are released and paid by the Ministry of Health. And uh, Ministry of Health is also uh, a stakeholder uh, in the uh, operations and the management of the PGIM. So therefore, the national needs are reflected in the programs and the intake uh, that we have. So if there is a decided number on the uh, that may affect in the intake. National policies will also impact on the decisions made by the boards uh, uh, that will then facilitate fulfillment of those national policies. Of course, uh, the availability of trainers, the resources, the training units, will be another determining factor um, that how many trainees that we can uh, take in. You might wonder, like, there is a, so much of a need for the country of a particular specialty, but unfortunately, if we don't have training, for our members, uh, able to, the PGM is unable to take uh, additional numbers, even if we want to. And of course, then there are demand and the interest for particular, particular uh, specialties. However, I must say that the PGM do not stop training programs just because there's no demand or the interest. That means there's no big numbers coming in. Still, we conduct these programs because they are uh, vital in terms of providing human resources to the country. And of course, one, lastly, uh, the performance at selections will also determine the number of trainees who come in. Say, for instance, if we have, say, 30 or 40 training slots, we might end up fulfilling only about 25. The reason being that not uh, many have uh, be, have reached the uh, cutoff or the reached the standards expected 
uh, to enroll into those programs. So these are some of the factors that determines. Now the pathway towards board certification I have shown in this um, uh, uh, timeline. Now I expect many of you to be uh, uh, not have started your uh, internships uh, uh, and just passed out. Now imagine you start your internships tomorrow and that is where I have marked today. You will be doing your internships for an year and then you also have to wait for another year to be eligible to do a postgraduate exam in Sri Lanka at the PGIM. Uh, so that's a, a generic clause for any postgraduate program. So uh, if you, you know, the latest you be able to do, if you start internships tomorrow, which probably will not be the case, uh, will be mid 2023. And from there, if you enter into a, a specialist training program, that's an MD, you will do a minimum of two years to uh, uh, to do the MD exam. That is where, uh, that is your halfway mark at a, a particular specialist training program. And then you will also do a, a one year minimum uh, uh, training in a local training center and another year in a foreign training center to complete your specialist training. So there's two years post MD. As you know, the pre-MD period is called the registrarship as well, and the post-MD training period is what you call the senior registrarship. So the latest you will be eligible for board certification is 2027, mid-2027. Uh, that is, of course, if you start uh, internships very early. Now, uh, you need to know that board certification is the ultimate qualification that allows a doctor to practice as a specialist in this country. So uh, obtaining that uh, will be vital for you, to, uh, uh, for you to fulfill that requirement. Now, I will briefly talk about only a selection, selection exams. This is where you enter into any type of program, not necessarily MDs, but even masters and the diplomas. As I said, you will wait one year after internship uh, in order to be eligible to uh, come into these programs. And many of the specialities will define what are the types of, uh, uh, what are the subject areas that you will be questioned on. And generally these are basic sciences knowledge at the undergraduate level. Um, so you can be sure that what you learn at, the, uh, uh, at uh, your medical school and uh, the basics application of it in some instances will be the basis of the selection exam. These may be in the form of multiple choice questions, which you are very much familiar with and uh, structured essay questions. And then you may also have to face an OSCE depending on the type of exam, mostly for clinical exams. Of course, uh, for, for the number managing or practical uh, uh, practicality sake, uh, sometimes you sit for an exam or the selection right written exam. And uh, if you pass that component, you move into the uh, second component of that particular exam. And once you are selected, you will be placed in a merit order. And that merit order is useful for the PGIM to place you or to allow, provide you with training units. So it will be you who will select based on the merit order, which training center that you will go into. But however, this does not mean that some of you will get a better training centers and others will not. The PGM has made it a point that uh, all of you will get similar opportunities in uh, similar type of training centers as much as possible. Now, of course, it's not only the MDs that uh, the PGM run, but there are so many other programs, especially the Master of Science programs, Master's programs, as well as uh, diploma programs. Uh, now, when you're selecting from your point's perspective, the important thing would be for you to know uh, whether these training programs allows you grade promotion, that is for you to move from one grade to the next in the Ministry of Health. Uh, of course, that is for the uh, doctors who are from the Ministry of Health. Now, this is there in the min service minute of the uh, health ministry. And if you look at it, you see that almost all the postgraduate programs, diploma and above, are listed there as el eligible for uh, grade promotion. And um, and new programs are gradually being added. So you may need to be uh, 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 sensitive to that. And of course, we do have postgraduate certificates also that are short programs, sometimes part-time, uh, that you will, be give, will give you additional sets of skills. 
Now, uh, of course, there are new programs emerging from the past several years. We have clinical genetics coming up, military medicine, biomedical informatics, and so on. The new programs are also in the pipeline. So you have to be always in the lookout. Visit the PGIM website because it lists out so many uh, of the all the courses that are available. And also now we have more uh, online programs and there will be new ones also uh, coming up online and part-time. So for this, you don't need a release from the ministry and that's, that will allow you to do these programs even wherever the station that you're in. So that is important for you to know uh, because with some commitments, you may not be able to start on with a program. Uh, of course, when you're deciding in a program, you may have to think of so many things. So you have to set your priorities, whether it's the important part uh, in certain point in life, you have to balance between these priorities. So now plan when your plan, you know, start with, you are supposed to start probably 2023, 2024. So you have enough time to actually plan. So if you plan enough, you'll be able to select a successful uh, program. Of course, it's not necessarily the clinical pathway that is available for you, as you can imagine. There's a lot of other uh, areas also that you can move in, academia, private sector, family practice, triforces, and so on, in even entrepreneurship. So think of these aspects as well and decide on what you're best at in moving forward. Of course, I invite you also to take part, um, uh, log in to uh, uh, um, uh, seek guidance from the career guidance unit of the PGM, which we have been, have, have set up uh, and will be active uh, in the coming uh, months. So you will be able to benefit from that as well. So thank you. I'm not sure whether there will be uh, time for questions, Madam, uh, or um, over to you to SLMA.